What's up guys, today's spoiler discussion is going to be on Persia, the Pursuant of Exploding Flame. This card is actually incredible, I'm so happy that we were able to get uh, something that's red and aggro-y, but that also has not too much red, so you can play it like in an off-red deck, if that makes sense. Um, I've actually always, the one thing I've never liked about red is you've always had to play kind of like either all red with another color splashed in and there was no real reason to ever like play a main color and just splash in red unless it was uh, red black for stuff like flame or haster and like a cthulhu deck or something but there was never a reason to play like let's say four blasting waves which is the green red stone and then like six green stones or a little red and you know feet sing and four green stones that was never a thing and um this is uh the second card we see actually uh the the other one was one of the the red rulers cards it was the three drop that was one red and two colorless that like removes your graveyard and does damage uh i generally like that card too just because it was one red and two colorless uh, i don't think we have enough cards that have just a tad red so that they're splashable and i think it's really important for the game that we get that because it makes it so that if you want to play let's say for example with persia if i want to play an evolution deck um, I can now splash red and I would get a swiftness target attack first strike possible flying resonator that even damages my opponent and I wouldn't have to play uh, an all aggro deck to have access to something like this because like Lancelot's always out of the question in decks that don't have a lot of red because it's dual red it just if you don't hit dual red early it just feels really lackluster late game and so Persia is a turn 3 player earlier if you of course have like Feet Sing or Elvish Priest or whatever your field may be but um, it's just really nice to know that if you have even that one source of red, that this is going to be really easy to play. Um, also, um, I actually played an evolution deck with a friend of mine when Reflex first came out. Um, I, I, um, I was going to try to post it up because I was actually like, it was a really fun deck to play. It wasn't in any way like tier 1 or anything like that, it was just kind of for fun. But Persia giving a counter to Ziz and then Ziz giving a counter to something else actually felt really, really strong. Uh, the hiding, the Beast Queen and hiding Persia, I mean. And so, I can actually see me splashing red in that deck because I, I just had pure green. And being able to have access to a card like this, and because Reflect was a ruler in, in that deck, um, it was just generally really good because the draw one and put one card in the bottom really helped with like Radiskir and just getting to your combo pieces because it was more of a combo deck. And I could see me still playing Reflect even after Diorata and playing that evolution deck with the addition of uh, this Persia, the Pursuant of Exploding Flame. And you have to consider that a lot of people are trying to argue that, you know, her being a 7-4 means that she's in Thunder range. Which even if she gets Thundered, I actually think that's totally fine. Um, um, hopefully it would be like on the, the next turn and you, you know, summon this when they're tapped out so you at least get like a 7 in. Or you can uh, destroy a monster or something first. But... Um, uh, her being a 7-4 and being in thunder range, if they waste a kill spell on her and then they take 500 damage anyway, that's still really, really great. Uh, that's actually like my, my favorite part about this card. The, the fact that she has that last effect makes me think she's just as useful in full red decks than she, as she is in non-full red decks. And it's because, uh, most of the time the only decks that play cards like Guinevere are cards, are decks that have, um, all red uh, except for once again Cthulhu is like the only exception that I've noticed that tries to play uh, red with um, black but has a decent amount of red still because most of the time I, I don't see like splashed in colors and decks that use red it's always just like full red so um, if you played this in a deck like let's say Sylvia which is obviously even better because you could play all red and then just produce the green with Sylvia's effect with the red stones but if you get to like swing with this and you have a Guinevere on the field and they try to like thunder and you tribute the Persia for Guinevere um, to draw two and discard a card and they still take 500 damage and they still wasted the thunder and you got to draw two and discard one that's really really strong not to mention that if you're pushing for a lot of damage and you swing with Persia to face with like flying and then you use Guinevere's effect to just do the plus four plus four she becomes an uh, 1100 and then she dies when she um does damage due to Guinevere and then they take another 500 so that's 1600 damage which is like almost a half of your life just with one Persia attack so I think this card is really underrated I don't think people are um people seem to really like it but 
I think it could be really, really strong, uh, a lot stronger than people notice. It's searchable by Ruke, which adds another factor in an all red deck that, or decks that typically do use Ruke. I think that's also really strong. I mean, you can technically play uh, black, red, Sylvia, and you would have access to everything that you typically use for like a Cthulhu engine, but you would, have a, you would have a searchable, like really fast creature that does a ton of damage and helps you push for damage because Cthulhu's always had that problem. Uh, that's why you would see like cards like Pumpkin Witch in the deck, just because um, it was always hard to push for damage. Uh, you can use it in, you know, just a uh, splashable like beast deck like I mentioned. Like with Reflect, I actually really like this card because it makes it um, not in Thunder range anymore. And that's really cool because if you swing for 7 to face and they have no blockers or you have flying and they're obviously not going to respond with Thunder because they have to wait for you to use the draw effect first and chase, chase that um, just because they want to be safe. And so, excuse me. You would get the 700 in for sure, and then, you know, at the end of the turn, if you try to use the draw effect or whatever, and then they chase with thunder, um, you've already got the 700 in, so she played her part, then they take another 500, and that was, and they had to use the thunder, so I think that, um, this card is really, really underrated, and it just seems extremely great. I'm really, really happy with the direction Force Will has been going with the set, and it just seems, like, and the art is beyond beautiful i think the full art of this is gonna look absolutely great her like the energy in her hands looks so cool the determination in her face i love the little like tattoo on her eye i think it's only on one side it doesn't seem like it's on the other side too much but um she seems like i've always been a, a huge fan of sakura from naruto which is really weird because like everyone hates her but like super strength is really cool to me because like she's she's like a female wolverine to me like she has like healing so she can't die and she has super strength and like the determination in her face and that mark on her eye really reminds me of the 100 healings mark of like when Tsunade or Sakura just like activated and their whole body gets like covered. And like it makes me want to play her just like so like smash people with this. Just like her 1200 damage in one card is just so good. Not to mention that I can trade with so much stuff because it has first strike and target attack. Like she's like a Snow White without the slight removal but like with so much more in my opinion. I think this card is just great. You can even use Flame King Shout and summon this off of it because it still has red in the cost. So... Um, yeah, uh, I've been really, really excited for this set. I'll be talking about more spoiler cards if I see any really, really cool ones. I haven't been covering all of them just because uh, I want to pick out the ones that I think are actually going to be really game-changing for the meta. And so if you guys do have any questions about any of the other spoilers or you want any of my opinions, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you did. I actually just had my one-year YouTube anniversary yesterday. It was the 22nd. Uh, so that was a whole year from my first upload, and I think this is like the 211th video or something. So I might be off on that, I'm not sure. It, it's been a while. So um, thanks to everyone that's been watching. I'm really, really glad, and I've had such a, uh, like a great time. And yeah, subscribe, comment, and I'll definitely catch you guys next time.